Hello, I'm Harry Mead. Welcome to my Fairfax Masterclass in Minutes. I'm going to talk about cross-country schooling from a walk. Cross-country tests various different skill sets, and a horse needs to be brave, honest, intelligent, athletic, and fast. Not all top cross-country horses are tigers who will take on anything by nature. Some of them are just very honest, and you can use that honesty to help tackle the biggest challenges there are. When you're training, you work on different aspects of this. But when it comes to encouraging the bravery of a horse, I like to keep it really simple and do lots of my jumping out of walk. Ditches, steps up or down, which includes banks and staircases, uh, water and owl holes are all fairly alien to horses and test their bravery. So I would spend more time focusing on this kind of cross-country work than I would a galloping over simple logs and tables and oxes. When a horse sees a hazard that they're unsure of, the first thing is to make it very clear that that's where you're going and this is where your line is key. By coming on the correct line, the horse has time to look and it's only by looking that they then really see because if the horse doesn't have sufficient time, they're still able to see that something's there, but they haven't had time to start to digest mentally what the problem is. Once they've seen the fence, then they need to understand it. And part of cross country is about testing a horse's intellect. We often face them with uh, problems or mental puzzles that they have to be able to cross almost like an assault course. So the horse has to have time. And particularly when they're competing, they have to be able to digest at speed these kind of problems. Once they've, they've digested the mental challenge, it's then about them accepting it. If they've accepted it, then they can jump confidently. So I tend to start schooling all of my horses over natural obstacles, even as young horses when they're just broken three-year-olds, they'll go and fiddle about over some small natural obstacles out of walk. In order to make it very clear to them, I take the speed right out. That doesn't mean that all of the energy has to disappear as well. You can generate a walk where they're light footed and slow, but like a cat on a hot tin roof. Approaching the fence at exactly 90 degrees means you're making it clear that they're not going left or right, but that you're looking to cross the obstacle. As the horse approaches, they slow down and begin to lower their head and neck to look at the fence. It's important to stay in the same balance. So as the horse slows, there'll be a tendency for your body to keep traveling forwards. So at that point, before they slow, I'd rock back slightly so that I'm behind the movement. But as I rock back and the horse draws the head and neck forward, the horse needs to have more rein. Otherwise, you as a rider prevent the horse from taking their head and neck down away from you. It's just as important to keep the lower leg forward as it is to keep the body back. When the horse looks and sees and begins to understand the problem, they may not automatically accept it, which means in that moment, if you're not behind the movement, the horse can momentarily stop or spin round. So stay behind the movement, keeping the leg there until the horse accepts the issue and then goes to jump. If you look down into the ditch, then this hampers the horse in two ways. Firstly, your focus is on the hazard rather than where you're going. So I would always try and look to the landing spot rather than to the obstacle I'm jumping. But secondly, it tips your body slightly forwards and affects a balance on the horse. I like to think if a young horse develops a complete acceptance and comfort at dealing with these types of issues, then they're never going to be problems through the horse's career right up to top level. A good cross-country horse normally doesn't balloon their fences. They jump quite conservatively, really because they haven't got a fear of what they're jumping. So we're encouraging them as young horses just to pop up and down steps and just step over ditches and, and pop down into water without them jumping too big. 
This approach means you're giving the horse their own independence, so they're able to work out their own footwork at fences. This is particularly useful if something goes wrong cross-country. If a horse slips before takeoff or stumbles on landing, then the horse is able to jump their, their way out using their own decision-making and footwork as long as the rider just doesn't interfere and stays in a neutral position. By serpentining up and down the ditch line, the horse can just develop a complete acceptance. And I don't mind if they actually put a foot down into the bottom of the ditch. It's about overcoming the fear of dark holes in the ground and crevasses. So the rider's job is to keep their heels firmly against the horse in that moment. It's the leg, and when I say leg, I mean the heels, which is gonna help a horse keep traveling forwards when their instinct is to say, shut down or go backwards. When I'm doing this kind of exercise, I always have a schooling whip, just so that in the moment where a horse is gonna jump, particularly up a step, you can just, if you need to, just give them the slightest touch on the quarters without taking a hand off the rein, which can just create a spark in their back end, enabling the horse to jump rather than climb. By using the schooling whip, the horse doesn't associate that sensation is being to do with the rider. If you use a short jumping whip and you slap a horse down a shoulder, it's very much the rider affecting the horse, whereas a schooling whip on the, touching the quarters is just a subconscious prompt for the horse to jump. I find that when you're competing and you're traveling at speed, you may get the horse over the fence, but it all happens so quickly that there's no time to digest the information and learn from it. But by going slowly, they very clearly looked and understood and accepted and they go away a better horse than they were at the beginning. <laughs>